Welcome into our Backyard Brothers podcast. Uh, we are uh, moving along with our NFL preview. Uh, we are, will be covering the AFC West and NFC East today. So um, a lot of things have happened in the last week to uh, to change some things around in other divisions, other teams, other uh, some of which will be covered today because they, they affect some of our, our teams here. Um, <clears throat> the one thing that I want to mention that did not that won't touch on anything today is the Arizona Cardinals traded for Joshua Dobbs uh, with the Cleveland Browns. Uh, that doesn't sound like it's a big deal and it may not be, but uh, it sounds like the Cardinals uh, uh, got some bad news from Kyler Murray's doctors that he may not play at all this season. Uh, and so uh, they're starting to try to find other options behind him too. So Anyway, the, uh, some of the other ones we'll, we'll cover in today's podcast, but uh, that's one that I wanted to mention. Okay. <clears throat> Are you seeing my screen? Yes. We're starting with the AFC West, the Denver Broncos. Um, they had some struggles last year. That is a little... Uh, <laughs> um you know, uh, saying enough, I think, uh, Nathaniel Hackett was the head coach, uh, and he was fired 12 games or 13 games into his first season. With that in mind, Russell Wilson came over last year. Uh, he was the quarterback, uh, and he had his worst statistical season of his career with the Broncos. That being said, once Nathaniel Hackett was fired, uh, those last four games of the season, Russell Wilson played his best. So, uh, not that he played great, but he played the best football once Nathaniel Hackett was gone. Uh, and so can, can that translate into better this year? Uh, as far as the uh, weapons go, the Broncos got another huge uh, bit of bad news. Tim Patrick, uh, who last year tore his ACL in the offseason, this year tore his Achilles in the offseason. Uh, so Tim Patrick will miss the entire season. Uh, he missed the entire last year as well. And so uh, he will not play this year. That means a big hole uh, in that receiving group. Right now they have Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy. Uh, th those are two pretty good players. Uh, Adam Troutman joins at tight end from New Orleans. And Samaji Pirine will join Javante Williams in the backfield. Javante Williams was hurt last year as well. He's really good when he's healthy. Uh, bringing Samaji Pirine over helps to bridge that gap. Up front, uh, two new additions, two big additions. Ben Powers at left guard, uh, played for the Ravens last year, and the Broncos got the best right tackle on the market. Uh, Mike McGlinchey was the 49ers right tackle for the last eight years, and he started every single game of his career. Uh, he comes over to solidify that right tackle spot to join these other three. Defensive line, Zach Allen was given a huge contract to come be the Broncos' new left tackle left defensive end. Uh, he showed a lot of promise with Arizona, and they're hoping he can replicate that same kind of thing here. Uh, linebackers, they brought over Frank Clark uh, from Kansas City. Uh, he's been really good in his career. Last year, he kind of fell off a little bit. The Broncos are hoping that he can, uh, he can find that pass rushing ability as well this year. Um, <clears throat> the Broncos made a signing this week uh, to fill a very big hole in their secondary, Fabian Moreau. And let me see if I can. Yeah, there we go. That's better. Uh, Fabian Moreau comes over uh, from the New York Giants to fill that second outside corner spot alongside two all pros here, uh, Patrick Sertan and Justin Simmons. This is the best unit on the team uh, in that secondary. Kawan Williams is a good slot, a slot corner as well to join Kareem Jackson. Uh, offensive depth, <clears throat> uh, as you can see here, uh, a lot of additions in that offensive weapons. Um, Marquez Callaway uh, joins along with Dwayne Washington, their former head coach from New Orleans, uh, kind of building a, a Saints West over here. Um, and uh, Chris Manhurst added at tight end, Michael Burton added at fullback. Defensive depth, uh, rookies uh, mainly are the additions here. Riley Moss at corner uh, to join J.L. Skinner at safety, Drew Sanders at linebacker. The rest pretty much stay the same from last year. 
special teams, a uh, couple additions at kicker and punter. Brad Maher was the kicker for the Cowboys last year. Brandon McManus was released and he signed with another team. And so they brought another big leg to help in that Denver thin air. So that should be good for the Broncos and Riley Dixon from the Rams joining at punter. Obviously, at uh, coaching staff, we have three new coaches here. Sean Payton makes the biggest splash as far as a, a coaching change in the offseason. He's won a Super Bowl. He was with the, the Saints for nine years, I think. Uh, and uh, he brings a lot of experience over to try to change this Broncos team to be a, a, a better better offense, better team. Joe Lombardi, who was with Sean Payton for many years in New Orleans, uh, also comes over to be the offensive coordinator. Vance Joseph was the Broncos head coach from 2017 to 2018, and now he returns in a different capacity to be the defensive coordinator. I think I finished last week, and so we're over to you, Cody, on the Denver Broncos. <clears throat> Um, well, first off, my, my first thought is to start with um, Brett Maher, the kicker. You know, I think it was last year, or was it two years ago, where I think he was with the Cowboys and he missed five or six field goals, I think, in a single game or, or, or in two games back-to-back or something like that. Um, I don't remember if it was postseason or, or what it was, but I don't know if you guys remember that or not. Um, but I, it makes me – that just kind of makes me, you know, pick up a little bit like, I wonder why they signed him, just give him another chance, I guess. Um, my biggest question mark, um, is obviously we know Russell Wilson has the potential to be amazing, really good. He's a, he's a pro bowl quarterback. Um, even all pro, I think, is he an all pro quarterback? Uh, all pro quarterback. Um, we know what potential he has from Seattle. Um, so now it's I, this season for me, my question is, I'm wondering if Russell Wilson is, is starting to go downhill or if it was literally just Nathaniel Hackett's coaching. Um, we know we did see him play better. So I'm curious to see if the pairing of Sean Payton and Russell Wilson to see how that um, how that affects Russell Wilson's play. That's my biggest question mark, of course. Um, I do know that Jerry Judy, there was a, a, he suffered a hamstring injury in practice. Um, but I don't, they said they were going to do an MRI. There's no timetable on what's going on there exactly. So we don't know if it's a bad injury that he's going to be out, you know, for a significant amount of time as well, or if he's just going to be back, you know, game two or game three. So um, I hope he's back sooner than later. Cause that's, that's definitely, it would be a big hit for the Broncos. Um, I, I think this team bringing Sean Payton in, we know Sean Payton is, is, is an amazing coach. Um, super, super Bowl winning coach. Um, maybe not quite a good filter, but um, he's, um, He's a great coach, and so we know what, what he can do, and we know what Russell Wilson can do. We know what that defense can do. So this team has the potential. This team has the what you know what it takes to be good and contenders in their division, and in a very competitive division. Um, I just don't think they have enough to bring down the Chiefs. Um, even if they are all playing good and healthy, I still don't even know if they have enough to bring down the Chiefs. Um, but they are a good team, and they can contend. And I think that with Champa in there, um, that that should make a difference. So, <clears throat> to address, I guess your first thing with with Russell Westbrook, you know, the last last couple of years in in Seattle, he would put up good numbers, but it couldn't translate to to wins overall necessarily. And, and so, there there is some of that natural just downhill slide toward the end of the career. And I I think that his career has been good enough to potentially land him in, land him in the Hall of Fame years from now so it's absolutely no slight against him um just consequence of age but uh, yeah we'll see it, if coaching does does change um usually a really good quarterback can make up for some bad strategy um and sometimes the other way around you know really bad strategy can kill a great quarterback and so we'll see what happens um sean payton being here, he's he's great. He's obviously worked with a great quarterback his you know the majority of his career, and so he can he may be able to do some do some good things and help this this offense get get its wheels spinning. Um, this team has had a lot of lot of changes, and I think they're overall net positive. Um, but I I think this is this is the team they're going to fight with the Raiders for the last spot in the division. 
Um, hopefully we'll see an improvement to the record, but I don't see an improvement by any more than two or three wins. Um, expect, you know, kind of a seven, maybe eight win season at best. Um, not expecting in any of the changes to give them the kind of boost that, that the most diehard Denver fan would expect. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I agree with, with both of you and in, in, in some of that, that uh, I, I don't think the Broncos are going to necessarily contend this year. Um, and, you know, they could, they could, they have the pieces to do so, but uh, it's, it's a tough division with both the chiefs and the chargers there and uh, the Raiders making changes as well. But I, I, I think Russell Wilson is going to be much better this year. I think Sean Payton works really well with quarterbacks. I think, uh, <clears throat> Lombardi, Mick or Joe? I can't remember. I think it's Joe in this case. Uh, uh, Joe Lombardi works really, really well with quarterbacks as well. He was the quarterbacks coach w- for Drew Brees for many, many years. Uh, I-, I think that Russell Wilson is going to play a lot better this year. It's not. I don't think it's going to make a, a huge difference, like you said, Dustin. Maybe a a a, 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 a positive two wins this year uh, from from last year. So, uh, and and that would be. That would be a good step. It's obviously not what the Broncos really want yet. They want a a, a big change, but I think they're they're getting there. Uh, but uh, th- it's been many years since the the Broncos have had a really competitive team. Actually, since they won the Super Bowl <laughs> uh, back in twenty fifteen, I think. Um, and so it, it's been a while. But uh, I like the Broncos' defense. I think they're they have a really good. They're really set up well there. Um, but. Uh, it, it's kind of a wait and see approach. See, see what the, the the Broncos have on offense compared to last year. So, but uh, in my mind, I, I don't think it's a it's a big big positive change at this point. Okay. Yeah, um, Any... Sorry, yeah, just real quick. I was going to say I um, I know that you said Dustin that you think they'll be um, going back and forth with the Raiders to kind of figure out who's going to take that last spot. And my, my opinion is that they'll be going back and forth with the Chargers on who gets that second spot. And so that's kind of my 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 thought there. Um, but that's the last one I'm going to say. Okay. On to the Super Bowl champion, Kansas City Chiefs. <clears throat> um, this guy is kind of good. Um, the MVP of the league last year, and. Uh, He's he does things that no other quarterback has really done. J- just his ability to uh, throw those weird off-platform throws and the no-look throws that apparently a bunch of, of players are trying to imitate at this point. But uh, he he's a unique player, and he's still – he's only 25, 26, 27 years old, and he's already one of the best quarterbacks in NFL history. And so what this guy can do later, uh, uh, just this year and beyond, is is pretty pretty amazing. Uh, their offensive weapons, um, they lose Juju Smith-Schuster, obviously, and so th- there's been talks about them trying to gain a – a number one receiver because right now their number one receiver is Mark Valdez Scantling, along with Kadarius Tony and Rashi Rice, their rookie second round. Uh, if I'm anyone, I, I I don't like that wide receiver group honestly with the Chiefs. Uh, uh, but we'll get to that in a second. Uh, anyway, Isaiah Pacheco really came on strong last year as a rookie, and Travis Kelsey is an All Pro. Uh, their offensive line changed their two tackles. Donovan Smith uh, comes over from the Buccaneers to be the left tackle. Jawan Taylor from the Jaguars to be the right. Their three in the middle stay the same, and there's two all pros there. Charles Omenahu joins the team from the 49ers at the left defensive end. Uh, Chris Jones stays as an all pro in the middle, along with Nadi and Karloftis. Uh, they bring over a new middle linebacker from the division, uh, from the Chargers, Drew Tranquil. Uh, this was a mo- this was a a position of weakness for the Chiefs at middle linebacker, and so trying to strengthen that with Drew Tranquil is a is a big big ability. These other two on the on the outside were both very good last year, but the, in the middle they had some some issues. So Drew Tranquil is a big tackling machine. He he could really answer that call. Uh, the four uh, safe, uh, the four defensive backs remain about the same. They did lose uh, Juan Thornhill, uh, and Brian Cook is taking his spot there at strong safety. He was a rookie last year. He's now taking that spot at strong safety. Uh, 
offensive depth. Uh, Richie James comes over to uh, help the wide receiver depth. He had an, had his best season of his career with the Giants last year and should help over there as well. Uh, Wanya Morris, this third round rookie uh, out of Oklahoma, could challenge for that uh, for one of the guard spots uh, as well. I didn't know he says tackle here, but uh, they're they're talking about him potentially moving into a starting guard spot. Uh, Felix Anodike Uzoma was their first round pick out of Kansas State. He's going to play a lot on the edge. Uh, Keandre Coburn is going to play some nose tackle. He's a sixth round pick out of Texas. Uh, they also brought over Mike Edwards from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to play safety as well. Uh, he's a big addition over there as well. Uh, Tommy Townsend was an all pro punter to join Harrison Butker and James Winchester, uh, all returning for the special teams. Uh, Andy Reid in his 11th season, he's now won two Super Bowls uh, with the Chiefs. Uh, Matt Nagy uh, takes over at offensive coordinator. He was an offensive coordinator with the Chiefs way back in 2016 and 17 before he left to become the Bears head coach. Last year, he was the quarterback's coach for the Chiefs. He's now taken over offensive play calling positions since Eric Bieniemy is gone. Steve Spagnuolo, one of the better defensive coordinators in the league, is now in his fifth season. Um the stop share is almost the same color as the Chiefs background, so I couldn't see it. Okay, Dustin. All right. The Chiefs, this is this is the, the team that I root for on a regular basis. So this is my time to rep here. Um obviously they have a lot of talent, kept a lot of talent uh to address the potential uh receiving core concerns. Uh, Travis Kelsey is their number one receiver, and and he lines up everywhere. I mean, this is a system that he'll line up as a receiver spot. He'll line up at tight end. He'll line up in the backfield. He'll take snaps under center. I mean, he'll he he'll do everything, and he's the number one receiver that, and everyone else around him is is just kind of supposed to be a speed, get the ball in space and run kind of uh, kind of player, and, and it just really works in their system. Um, they've they they did lose a few key players such as um Juan Thornhill and Frank Clark. Um, we'll see how well they can replace that on on defense. Um, I I see absolutely no reason why this team can't be in the Super Bowl again. They can't win it again. Um, they this is this is a dynasty that uh can last for not only years but decades um and and so i expect them to be back um there again um and as you said with mahomes only being yeah 26 27 years old um he he could collect a whole lot of jewelry over the, over the career he's already collected mvp and a couple of super bowls and i expect those to keep stacking up over the next over the next decade Uh, yeah, and, and Travis Kelsey is definitely the biggest, uh, the, the wide receiver, and he's he's listed at tight end, and he's he's really a glorified receiver. He doesn't do much blocking, honestly. <laughs> he's a he, he's a receiver, uh, but he's the best tight end there is in, in the NFL, and one of the best in NFL history. And so, uh, yeah, but I do know that the Chiefs have been shopping around trying to find a receiver to bring over into Kansas City. Uh, they, they've talked. They initially talked about DeAndre Hopkins, who went elsewhere, but, uh, um. So there, there's there's still some workings on to try to find a receiver to to complement Kelsey because uh, MVS Mark Valdez Scantling is a good player. He's he has never been a right wide receiver one in his career, and so uh, and and you know Mahomes can do anything. He can throw to anyone, uh, and Kelsey being there as well as. Uh, over there in the offensive depth, you you saw a couple running backs who play a lot of receiver. Uh, Jarek McKinnon being being the, the the top one there that does a lot of that. Um, did I say Jerick McKinnon? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, anyway, uh, I, I agree uh, that uh, the Chiefs should repeat as AFC West champions uh, for this would be eight years in a row, I believe, at this point. Uh, and there's there's nothing really stopping them to win that division. Uh, I'm going to stop short of saying that they, they necessarily are the favorites to repeat in the Super Bowl, 
they, they certainly, I could see them in the AFC championship game. I could see them in the Super Bowl. Uh, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to fall a little short of saying that they're the favorite to repeat, but uh, I think that this is a, this is a team that will always be in contention for the Super Bowl for the next decade. So. Yeah. I think what I was going to add is as long as Patrick Mahomes is under center, this team can meet the Super Bowl. And that's just the, the way it is right now. Um, Travis Kelsey is is just insane. Is the right word to to use? Um, I'm I'm wondering if he's to the point of you know being the best tight end of all time, or if he's just in top five. I know there's Rob Gronkowski. I'm not sure if we can. I don't, I don't know. That's, that's a conversation on time. But he's he's phenomenal. Um, so. Yeah, but with with what you're saying about being, you know, you don't know if you're there the favorite to, you know, repeat. I think I would agree with you. I'm not sure they're the favorite, but again, if it's there's Patrick Mahomes, they can be in the Super Bowl. It's not, it, it, it's easy for them to get there, because um, it's just how good they are and how 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 well coached they are with Andy Reid. Um, I agree that they should win this the AFC West division, and it, it would be a disappointment if they didn't. Um, I just don't see any reason or way that they wouldn't win it. Um, and I, I, other than that, I'm not even sure if I have a whole lot more to add about this team than, than what you guys have said. So I just think it's a good team, and, and there's no reason they should win. Okay. Moving on to the Las Vegas Raiders. Um, this is the they made quite a few additions, but this is the biggest one. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo coming over to be the quarterback from San Francisco. Uh, you, you can talk a lot about uh, that he he may not be a top echelon quarterback in in the league, but wherever he goes, all he does is win. Uh, and maybe you can attribute to that to some systems that he's been in some coaches some good teams but this guy he just wins and he he's actually he doesn't throw very many interceptions uh he's one of the sneaky good quarterbacks in the league maybe as a game manager level but really good player uh coming over to be the the quarterback there uh josh jacobs is in a contract dispute uh he was the nfl rushing leader last year uh and uh he has is holding out right now whether or not he reports to camp at all whether or not he plays game week one we don't know that yet uh we know that he's holding out uh because the raiders declined to extend him a contract which i'll get to in a second but in my mind is ridiculous but uh and he's an all pro and he led the nfl in rushing last year Devonte adams also an all pro and wide receiver they brought over jacoby myers from new england to be that second receiver along with hunter renfro uh, and they drafted Michael Meyer, a uh, Notre Dame rookie in the second round to be that new tight end replacing Darren Waller, which is a big deal. Um, and you can see when you get J Jimmy Garoppolo and Jacoby Myers, you're, Josh McDaniels is really trying to set up his New England Patriots in Las Vegas at this point. Uh, offensive line remains exactly the same as last year, uh, which had its ups and downs. Uh, Colton Miller is one of the best left tackles in the NFL. The rest of these four are kind of uh, up and coming, and so uh, offensive line could be an issue. Uh, defensive line, uh, Chandler Jones had a down year. Uh, he's at the end of his career, but he they're hoping they they still have something that they can they can milk out of him a little bit longer. Max Crosby is not at the end of his career. He's one of the best defensive players in the league. Uh, he was excellent last year. Uh, linebackers, they brought over Robert Spillane uh, from Pittsburgh to be the middle linebacker uh, to to join Divine D. Blow on the outside there. Uh, Marcus Peters was a big addition uh, late in the offseason uh, to bring over uh, to be their number one cornerback there. Uh, he had kind of a down year last year in Baltimore, but he is an all-pro in his career, and the Raiders really needed help in that secondary. Uh, speaking of help, they also brought over Brandon Faison uh, from the Colts to be the slot corner and Marcus Epps from the NFC champion uh, Eagles to be the strong safety to join those other two. Offensive depth, uh, they drafted Aiden O'Connell in the fourth round to be their backup quarterback. Uh, they are also hedging their way, hedging their bets against uh, Josh Jacobs, may maybe may or not uh, may or may not play in week one. And so they're they're making sure they have 
plenty of running backs, including an addition of Damian Williams there from Atlanta to help. Um, they grabbed DeAndre Carter to be their punt returner. Uh, Austin Hooper was also brought over at tight end to help uh, to help here. Uh, he and Michael Meyer will split duties at tight end. Uh, defensive depth, Tyree Wilson was a seventh overall pick. Uh, he's going to split time with Chandler Jones at that left end spot. And so a lot of people have high hopes for what Tyree Wilson can do. Uh, Byron Young is also a rookie third round pick at defensive tackle. Um, and uh, David Long was brought over at cornerback from the Rams. Uh, you can see a really good special teams unit in Las Vegas. Both kicker and punter Daniel Carlson and A.J. Cole were all pros last year. Uh, two of the better players at their positions, Jacob Bowman Moyer, long snapper brought over from Denver. Uh, Josh McDaniels in his second season with the Raiders, uh, he had kind of a down season last year uh, to start, Not didn't inspire a whole lot of confidence, but uh, Mick Lombardi and Patrick Graham joined him uh, both in their second years as well. So I guess this is me. Um, as I mentioned, um, there's about four or five running backs in this league. I, I understand where the market goes that right now your you, you, teams are not valuing running backs uh, nearly as much as any other position because of their shelf life, because of, of, you know, it seems like there's a good running back for three years and then they're, they're done. And so there, a lot of teams are declining to pay running backs. I think there's about four running backs in the NFL that, deserve to be paid really, really high and are the best players on their teams. Josh Jacobs is number one on that list. Josh Jacobs, Saquon Barkley, Derrick Henry, and Nick Chubb. Those are the four that I would pay no matter what because they all are the best players on their teams. Uh, this the, the Raiders have a really good offense uh, from on paper uh, with Josh Jacobs if he plays, with Devontae Adams, Jacoby Myers, Hunter Renfro, uh, Jimmy Garoppolo is, has a lot of weapons that he can distribute this ball to. Uh, I really like what the Raiders look like on offense. Uh, if everyone plays, if everyone is healthy, uh, defense is going to be a big struggle. I think, uh, th this is a team that's going to struggle on defense, but, uh, offensively, I think they're set up really well for success. Cody. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I, I think um, it, it kind of bothers me um, with with how they're treating running backs right now. Like, it makes sense. I understand why they are, um, but, it, but it bothers me um, just because the, these are players. These are skill positions. These are talent players. These are players who score and win games for you, um, especially for the Raiders. They, they wouldn't have gotten the record they did last year without Josh Jacobs. Um, he is definitely the best player on their team by a mile and, and, and they need to treat him as such. And so I think that other than paying, you know, your, your, your running backs, I think they need to invest in them as well, invest in their health, invest in, in, in trying to do your best to make their shelf life longer. Um, you know, that kind of idea. And so, uh, it, it, you know, I, it's been kind of, kind of sad for me to see that running back, running back market suffer the way it has, especially in last season and two. Um, with that being said, I am really high on Tyree, Tyree Wilson. I think that he is going to be a really, really good player, a really impactful player. Um, and I, I know that I was, I was wanting Seattle to draft him um, originally. Um, I, I just think that he's going to be, he's going to, he's going to be really Max Crosby is on the opposite, side, opposite end. I think he's going to, he has that potential. So um, I do expect their defense to be better than it has been um, mainly because of that front, that front four there. Um, but that does not mean that they are a team to contend for their division. They're they're not. They they're not even going to be tending for a second. Um, I think that they'll get lucky if they get third. But um, that's my my opinion. I think that they 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 have some of the pieces they need in place. I think it's just about developing those pieces and then making sure the right plays are called and time management is done well and just make sure coaching staff gets everything done correctly. So. Um, I guess to end with that, I think they need to get Josh Jacobs in that room eight, as soon as possible and make your team better. It's uh, interesting that we, we we all talked about this team has a lot of talent. They're, this team is full of all pros, um, full of historically great players. Um, 
but I don't think either of us ex- expect them to make a huge splash this season. And then, and I, I see this this team has been full of of great talented players for several seasons and never, <laughs> very very rarely broke five hundred in a season. And then, and so if if Garoppolo can come in and and lead this team to wins, then yeah, maybe it can finally all click and and run together smoothly. Um, I think one of the things we've talked about offline is uh, Garoppolo is bound to miss some games with injury. He he always has. Um, and so is is Aiden O'Connell prepared and ready to step in and still lead this team to wins? Um, and so they they do have a couple questions to answer there. And and I guess overall my feeling is just a little bit of confusion that this team is, is full of talent. Why aren't they leading to 11, 12, 13 win seasons? And why haven't they been doing that for five years? And so we'll see if, if some of the changes, especially Garoppolo can help get them there. Cause this team has enough talent and there's no way that they, there's no reason they shouldn't be. Yeah. Great thoughts. Uh, moving on to the Los Angeles chargers, last team in this division. Uh, Justin Herbert just got paid. Uh, he is now the highest paid play, player in the league, uh, highest paid quarterback. Uh, he got a huge deal uh, to uh, continue to uh, move his career forward. Austin Eckler uh, also had some issues with getting paid, uh, although he is he is playing just fine. Quentin Johnston was drafted in the first round to be that third receiver in this really good group of receivers, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, alongside tight end Gerald Everett. Uh, Offensive line, Rashawn Slater was hurt most of last year at left tackle. He was really good as a rookie, and so now uh, he returns at left tackle. John Marie Sawyer played left tackle for Rashawn Slater, and now will slide back into his left guard spot. Zion Johnson was excellent as a rookie at right guard. Corey Lindsley is a great center. Trey Pickens has developed really well as a right tackle in this league. Uh, Sebastian Joseph Day uh, at left end. He moves inside on passing downs where he can rush from the inside. Morgan Fox is a good uh, right end as well. Austin Johnson missed most of last year. Uh, Eric Kendricks was the big and one of the only uh, veteran additions the Chargers made last year. Uh, They really needed help at linebacker. Eric Kendricks led the Vikings in tackles last year. And so this is, that's a big addition. Khalil Mack went to the Pro Bowl. Joey Bosa would have if he played longer, but he was hurt for a lot of last year. So that's a good linebacker group now as well. Um, Asante Samuel was really good at cornerback. Uh, Michael Davis had a fantastic season. Uh, a lot of people expected J.C. Jackson to play that spot, but he was hurt and then not not as uh, as good as people thought. And Michael Davis had a really good year, and he's solidified himself in that second spot. Derwin James is an all-pro uh, safety, one of the best in the league. Offensive depth uh, includes TCU players drafted. Uh, Darius Davis will be their, uh, their new kick returner, uh, maybe punt returner as well. Uh, Max Dugan was drafted as well. Uh, um, defensive depth. Uh, includes several draft picks as well, in addition to Nick Williams and Tay Crowder brought on. Those three, along with Eric Kendricks, are the only veteran additions the Chargers made this year. J.C. Jackson returns in this uh, slot corner spot. Uh, he was a big money addition last year, didn't pan out, but uh, they still think they, they like him at the slot corner spot. Uh, a dicker the kicker as he's called, uh, is a uh, really good player at kicker uh, to join J.K. Scott and Josh Harris. Uh, Brandon Staley is on the hot seat already, uh, just in his third season, based on a bad first year and then last year getting uh, losing that 24-point lead in the playoffs. Uh, he's changed out his coordinators to try and help that out. Kellen Moore was the Dallas Cowboys offensive coordinator for the last few years. He now joins as the offensive coordinator for the Chargers. Derek Ansley uh, is promoted from the uh, – defensive backs coach into defensive coordinator spot. Cody. Uh, I'm, I'm my biggest, maybe not question, but thing I'm excited for is to, to is to watch Quentin Johnston um, in this offense. Um, he, he obviously tall, very fast, vertical threat. Um, we saw what he did in the, you know, with, for TCU uh, last, last season, the team made it to the, the championship. Um, a lot of that also because of Max Duggan, who's uh, Herbert's backup as well. So, 
Um, I'm, 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 I'm excited to see him play. I think that he can, he can be an impact player and make a lot of, a lot, a lot of, uh, a lot of impact plays this team and that being combined with Keenan Allen and, and, um, Mike, Mike Williams, that is him. I think so. Yeah. Sorry. Mike Williams. That's, that's a really good offense. Then you got Austin Eckler in the backfield. Um, and he's, he's, he's electric in my opinion. Um, Justin Herbert is a fantastic quarterback, and and he is. I I'd be curious to hear your guys' thought on this. I'm not I, I'm not sure if I can say he's elite yet, but he's really close. He's really close to being that. Um, and so he's you know he he can make some big differences for this for this team as well. So I I think this is a team that can be will be going like I said be going back and forth with the Broncos for that second spot. Um, I don't know if they'll. I don't, no one can unsee the Chiefs right now, but this is a team that has a lot of firepower and 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 they should be able to do really well. So I think it's all on Brandon Staley to get this team gelled. Uh, they have the talent that they need. That's... Um, Austin Eckler is is the 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 best player on this team. Um, I don't think that there's there's anybody who can compete for for that spot. Um, he's, he's one of those guys where just get him the ball as often as you can. He's going to, he's going to get touchdowns. He's going to get big gains. Um, the, he, he's got to be the absolute linchpin of the team. Everything needs to revolve around him. Um, so yeah, interesting that while Herbert is good, that he got paid and Eckler, Eckler hasn't, right. And so it's, we'll, we'll see, we'll see if anything changes in years to come, but I, I'm a big fan of Eckler, um, and I expect with with his impact uh, this season to to see a 11, 12, 13 win season. Um, have a, have an ultimately a really good season around him, and for him to potentially lead lead all all offensive skill players in touchdowns again. Um, yeah. We are going to be there. we're going to be cut off, so I will give my analysis on the other end. So.